seem well, especially well enough for you to feel good about it. Um, but it has a lot of food on it. And so, just like we already said, you know, you, you paid to raise the animal, and that's food you're throwing away. Um, so you should learn to make it yummy. And we take our time in the head as well as we can, actually several different times. So we'll scald and scrape the pig, clean it then, and we remove the head, clean it again, only that time it's like on a table in front of us so you can actually spend a little bit more attention to detail. And if you need to, scraping isn't doing everything you need it to with a bell scraper, that's what one of these are. This is what we used yesterday to clean the, clean the, the skin uh, of its scurf and hair. Um, after uh, you do that to the best of your ability, if there's still stuff there, you can use a torch and actually singe and burn and then scrape. Okay, it's a little, it's a little funny looking now, regrettably, because we have already removed the ears and the jowl. Um, oh, it just fell off. <laughs> jowl. Jowl. Well, okay, so the other thing we're going to show you, um, and he'll do his best to show you probably with the other half, it's not as broken up, but the actual shot placement, um, this is not why you're here, I apologize, this is more graphic than you're prepared for, my apologies, but for a lot of people that want to kill their own pig, it's important that they know where to shoot the pig, and why, why that's relevant. Um, so we have the head for you here, and you can see both in entirety, and then also the cross section of it, so you can see where the cranium sits inside the head. Generally, I shoot about two to two and a half inches above where the eyes meet, perpendicular to the skull. Um, and that is, that is different than the old X method, from the ears to the eyes, because in truth, today, all the pigs that we confront, like they look very different one to the next. They're not all the same cookie cutter stamped pigs that they were half a century ago when that X model existed in all of the old books. Um, some of the pigs have really long snouts and their eyes are maybe a foot from where their ears are. Others, like Coonies or American Guinea Hogs, they're like all scrunched up and they're really, really tight, the eyes and the ears. So as a general rule, I go about two inches above where the eyes meet, perpendicular to the head. And that'll usually send a 410 slug, which is what we use, right through the skull and the cranium. Um, that's our preference, uh, is a 410. You can drop a pig with any number of rounds, um, but the 410 does exactly what we needed to without doing anything more than we wanted to. So it's a really ideal round for, uh, for dropping a pig or a beef for that matter. So we clean and clean and clean and clean, and then we take it off and then we clean some more. Um, and then we take the jowls off. The jowls have quite a bit of, of meat on them. Uh, have you guys ever heard of jowl bacon? Mm, yes, yes, okay. Like jowl crack. bacon is a thing because it has a very similar structure to the belly, where it's got fat and then meat and fat, etc. And so it lends itself well to the same treatment as bacon. Um, you maybe have heard of guanciale, which is a, a like the same thing as jowl bacon, only it's not smoked. Uh, and it doesn't have sugar, it's just a dry cured cut of the same thing, the gel. The rest of the head, um, now that it's been cut in half and cleaned, uh, we can now clean the inside of it, which is where the teeth are. We take the ears off so we can clean inside the ears. All that kind of yucky stuff, but if you take your time, uh, you can actually make sure all of it is quite clean so that when it goes into your stock pot, there's still pounds of food left on that skull. Uh, it's really difficult, even if you're skilled with the boning knife, it's very difficult to remove all the meat off of that skull, but hot water does that for you in your stock pot. So that is a perfect candidate for the stock pot, along with other collagen-rich things like the trotters, the tail, the skin, and the rest of the bones and the ears. Okay. So underneath um, the jowl is the cheek muscle, the masseter. It's a really, really nice cut. Um, but it needs to be treated uh, gingerly for it to be edible. It's a super powerful muscle that pigs use to crush all kinds of nuts, including walnuts, um, so it needs to be cooked properly. Uh, otherwise, you just put it in your stock pot, it'll flavor your stock, and then also cook down for you to consume later, if you choose. We're gonna do a lot of the same that we did on round one. So basically, second verse, same as the first, um, and he's gonna take his skirt off as soon as he takes off the leaf. As you can see now, 
he was able to cut at the beginning of the leaf where it met the skirt and then just pull straight back towards the hem uh, section of the pig. So he made one incision here where the skirt and the leaf meet and then everything else was torn by hand. Did we do a better job that time? Okay. So again, leaf fat um, is used for? Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of that throughout the second half, hopefully, that will help you guys kind of uh, <clears throat> remember some of the information a little bit better. Right now he is holding skirt, skirt steak, right, which act actuates the diaphragm. Um, this is good for sausage. sausage, right? If it were a larger piece, like from a beef, again, it would be really good for uh, fajitas. Um, so the leaf and the skirt have been removed. Now there are two other things that are going to be removed before uh, we butcher. It's the membrane of the ribs, which is really not necessary, but it's a nice touch. Uh, and then the tenderloin itself. To do it, if you listen, you can almost hear his knife scraping along the underside of those bones. He's very careful to not cut through the tenderloin. Um, there's only you know, one on each half, and they're not very big, so it's good if you can take as much muscle off as you can. If you were to remove it by hand, which you can do also, you would go with your fingers together, just like he was, from the tail towards the head. If you go from the, the head towards the tail, you're likely to open up and shred the muscle. It's pretty tender and open grain. So if you do that by hand, which you can most of the time, you want to go from back to front of the animal. And then, it's also, I didn't talk about this at length uh, for the first half, but the tenderloin doesn't just stop neatly, it terminates into other muscle groups, like so many other parts of the pig do, and those muscle groups in this section happen to be the ham. So what he's gonna do with